I was at Five Blessing Afghanistan on 4 May 2010. We got called out uh, to our guns you know, for an incoming fire mission. And then once we got our uh, direction of fire, as soon as we set the gun down, I heard this faint whistle. And then next thing you know, I'm laying on my back. And so, you know, I'm yelling out, I'm hit. Uh, look down at my trousers, there's blood everywhere. My name is Nathan Shoemaker. I was a sergeant in the United States Army. I was stationed at Five Blessing in Kunar Province, Afghanistan. So I've been married to my wife, you know, for almost 11 years now. You know, my son Eli is seven, and my daughter Kaylee is three. The reason why I joined the Army is uh, mainly because my grandpa, you know, he was in the 101st, and he was telling me all these cool stories about jumping out of airplanes and all that kind of cool stuff. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I want to, I want to do. Whenever we got hit, you know, all I can see was my injuries. I couldn't feel them at the time. The gunnery sergeant, you know, he was telling everybody to stay down, stay down, get down. Our whole entire uh, section was hit, you know, some way. My buddy Kennedy, if it wasn't for him, you know, I could have bled out because he was the one that noticed, you know, the blood that was, uh, in a way, pouring out of me. He was the one that told the doc, hey, let's get some tourniquets on his legs. And so, and whenever he was walking back and forth, he was telling me, he was like, hey, you're gonna be all right, you're gonna be good. In a way, it was kind of freaking me out a little bit. You know, of course, I'm just looking all around, and next thing you know, I'm getting picked up by a couple people. We were all medevaced out. Once I got in there, they cut off all my clothes, my uniform. Whenever we landed in Asada bed, you know, our guys helped us out of the chopper. It was kind of nice to see, you know, a friendly face. You know, whenever we got off, you know, to tell them, like, it's going to be okay. I was actually uh, asleep at the time. Um, the phone rang, and I saw the number, and it was the area code that he usually calls from. And I was excited. I hadn't heard from him in, in a while. But when I picked up the phone, they um, immediately asked, like, we're looking for Sergeant Shoemaker's wife. And it's just, I just, I, I feel like I just kind of, like, blacked out. I, I knew I could hear what they were saying but I just, like, a thousand things went through my mind. They told me he got hurt in his legs. They just reassured me that, you know, he was gonna be fine and that they would keep me updated with everything. Of course, I blacked out and then they moved me to Jalalabad and they noticed that I had a cold foot and I had an amputate, you know, right above the knee. And of course, at this time, you know, I had no idea what was going on because you know, I'm blacked out. And whenever I woke up at Walter Reed, you know, my leg was gone. When I got there, he was still intubated, and so we couldn't talk to him or anything. And then the next morning, um, when we saw him, he, they had brought him uh, out of the intubation, and he was talking. I was just happy that I, to see him awake, because it was really scary to see him intubated. He actually asked us what we were doing there. He kind of didn't realize like where he was or what, what was going on. He didn't know that his leg was amputated. He, he didn't realize that until a nurse came in and put the pillow down on his bed and he was like, you know, where's my leg? And it just, he kind of, he was in and out, but he was just happy to see all of us. I was shocked whenever I found out that my leg had been amputated. I'm like, no, this can't be happening to me. You know, this is, no, because I've, I've got, you know, I've got stuff to do. You know, this is, just, I, I can't be like this. And, you know, one thing that really helped me out a lot whenever I was an inpatient, you know, I was able to get a wheelchair and then they were able to show me what they call the mat seat. It was pretty much, you know, a state-of-the-art rehab facility. I saw a lot of people there with the amputations, you know, if, whether it's an arm, a leg, a foot, below the knee, above the knee. But just seeing those guys out there, you know, walking around on prosthetic legs, having prosthetic arms, you know, come to, you know, my life isn't so bad. But, you know, look at them, they're going out there, they're walking. You know, I want to be like that. That's my goal right there. And, you know, as soon as I got my leg, you know, I worked my way up to that. A physical therapist, I saw her for an hour you know, five days a week for, I'm gonna say like almost nine months. Her nickname was Bunny the Destroyer. She was one hell of a physical therapist. She was fantastic. You know, 
know, she really pushed me. And if it wasn't for her and, you know, my wife upstairs, I probably wouldn't be, you know, where I am at today. You know, I just like to break boundaries. I like to, you know, go above and beyond. You know, when people say, oh, you know, you can't do that because of your leg, you know, I'm like, I just want to go out there and prove them wrong. You know, I'm going to work on myself, better myself. Whenever I go to the gym, people will say, you know, let's see, okay, well, he only has one leg and he's pushing himself, you know, and I have two legs and two arms, you know, why can't I do that kind of stuff? Yeah, you know, I initially um, heard of JCS, you know, through my brother, Dan. Uh, Matt Cutler started talking to me through email, like, hey, I want to meet you. You know, uh, are you available for dinner or lunch anytime this week or next week? I'm like, yeah, let's, you know, I can do dinner. Once I met Matt, I met Randy, I met uh, Charlie, and I met Holly as well. Um, and Todd nicely joined us, and uh, he's just saying nothing but great things, you know, about this organization. You know, they're telling me that they want to help out every you know, post 9 11 severely injured vet, you know, that they can, and you know, they don't want to uh, see you know another injured veteran, you know, struggling from day to day activities. I'm like, oh wow, that's awesome. Okay, well, yeah, I'd, lo I'd love to be part of this, uh, this organization. I've been treated like family, and not only that, but my wife has as well. They were just so, like, welcoming. They, like, it just felt like we were just their family. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great, you know, with any, anything I need, if I need somebody just to talk to, you know, I'm able to just pick up a phone. It was so nice to know there's people that are going to be able to help us in the future if we need help and it made me happy. I wasn't crying because I was sad, I was crying happy tears. So. JCS is going to be there, they're going to have my back. You know, they want me to be successful in life and uh, I just like to uh, party at one of the gallows as well, you know, just hang out with all the vets.